The ATO is crushing businesses. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein of coffee and let's check out this article from Yahoo Finances discussing about the ATO putting more businesses to the edge and, well, forcing them to shut down. Now, I've made the argument for some time that, well, during the, shall we say, pandemic economic interventions, when they changed the rules and allowed businesses to trade while insolvent, that that would have flow-on effects and we'll start to see that materialize in businesses' insolvencies. That's it. We'd have a, an insolvency cliff. Now, I would say, I'd make the argument that that has played a part in the number of construction firms that we're seeing going under. Because it's, it's kicking the can down the road. Now, if you're not aware, as a business, you need to sign a little piece of paper every year for ASIC to say that you're solvent. It means you can pay your bills when they fall due. You can't push it out. Now, if you've ever worked for someone and they've done the good old paid when paid line, which, which is common in construction, guys. I mean, getting not paid and getting payments pushed out, it's, it's a stressful thing in the construction industry. I think the most, what did, what did I have? Like, oh, I don't know, 100 grand outstanding and uh, it was just getting dragged out and you got all these people there working. And for me, it, the costs are just staff and rent and, and equipment, you know, software. Not too bad as a professional in, in the game, but... For the tradies, shit, you know, if you're paying for all the materials, it'd be a nightmare. It would be an absolute nightmare. So if you're kicking the can down the road because they changed the rules and one job, you think, okay, we'll make a loss on that one, but the next one will make money. Oh, no, that one, you know, materials went up. We didn't make a profit there. Oh, that one's dragged out. We didn't make a profit there. And it just goes on and on and on. And, and we're at this situation here where the ATO is winding up businesses and it's just because the tax bills, you know, you know, you push that off a bit later. That's only every quarter. People hold on to the super and don't pay it for their staff. That's an old trick. Although they're, they're wising up with that. That's why I remember there was an architect I know from uni days and he got, he lost his job. They didn't pay any of his super. And I met him at an event. We had some drinks and I asked, I said, I use your story to tell to share with viewers to always check their superannuation. And he, he got pretty, he got, no, you reminded me, I'm having flashbacks, the poor guy. Anyway, back to this. So, ATO debt pushes more businesses over the edge. More businesses are being driven to rescue programs as the ATO claws back 50 billion of tax debt and operating costs. As, and operating costs rise. More businesses are being driven to the brink of collapse as the ATO tightens the screws on outstanding debts and there's more pain to come. More than 10,000 companies are expected to enter external administration by the end of the current financial year, ASIC predicts. This would mark a level not seen in more than a decade. Insolvency firm Durish Sutherland said it had seen a noticeable uptick in businesses being driven to rescue programs like small business restructuring and voluntary administrations across a wide range of industries. And this is the sad reality of it. In construction, uh, one of the common stories we always hear, a mum and dad operation, they'll be borrowing against their own house to keep the pro- get the projects done. That, that's the... And it's heartbreaking, guys. You know, business, uh, business owners aren't these the, the stereotypical evil guys. A lot of them are just small business owners, you know, with a, a family, often a mum and dad, running a business because they want to, to contribute. They want the freedom to not be under a big corporate. The problem is the more of these small businesses that are destroyed, the more you'll have to work for the big corporates. And then it becomes like a dystopian corp tech future, like in cyberpunk or something. Tax debt is the primary reason, but higher operating costs are pushing businesses over the edge, said the partner, Andrew Spring. The ATO is currently working through more than 50 billion dollars in outstanding tax debt including more than two-thirds that is owed by small businesses a large amount going is unpaid gst collected from consumers or pay as you go withheld from employees pay that hasn't been handed to the tax office this is why i advocate for businesses not having that responsibility put it to the employee 
you pay them all the money, everything, their superannuation, their tax, everything goes straight to them. Then it's the individual's responsibility to pay the tax department and to pay into their super. <laughs> I, I know I know it's not going to work. I know it would be a complete disaster, but it would shift the political orientations of a huge number of people instantly. Once they, they started having to transfer the money you know, go into the bloody Combank camp or whatever and type in the BSB of the DAX department and send that money out over there every week or every paycheck. That's going to make them a little bit more critical about all these people demanding handouts and demanding a share and all these people that expect others to provide for them. We need to push for that. If, if you want to see political change in Australia, people need to pay their own taxes. It'd be the be far better than any education program you could do because that's the reality of it. <laughs> why, why am I paying all this money and getting bugger all back, you know? Why are my services uh, getting worse every single year and I'm paying all this money out there? And then they'll see. They will see. Otherwise, otherwise, people are happy when they get taxed back because they're paid, you know, too much tax has been hoovered out of them. They're happy that they get something back. The ATO returned to firmer debt collection actions towards the end of last year after giving taxpayers some breathing room during the pandemic. Spring said the creditor community was becoming less tolerant to operational behaviours that may have contributed to a business's financial distress. A note of the ATO was at the forefront of this shift. It's placing an even higher level of scrutiny on historical compliance when considering a proposal for restructuring, Spring said. Anecdotally, we're hearing... This is also the case with pre-insolvency discussions regarding ATO payment plans. Spring warned the hammer is about to drop for businesses that had fallen behind on their statutory compliance and urged businesses to act now. Oh, this is... <sighs> Was it worth it? All this economic intervention. The Allaire's monthly credit risk insights report found insolvency remain, insolvencies remained 50% above pre-pandemic levels in April, reinforcing the long-anticipated catch-up in insolvencies from pandemic lows. Yep, this is the cliff that we've been talking about for some time. Small businesses face a stressful period. Local search chairman Daniel Stotton said he had heard from tens of thousands of small business clients who were facing higher business costs. From increasing utility bills, insurances, overheads, and fuel and labor costs, it's undeniably an extremely stressful period for SMBs around Australia, Stoughton said. The federal budget includes some measures for small business, businesses, including an extension of the $20,000 instant asset write-off scheme for another year and a $325 energy bill rebate for around 1 million small businesses. They should just increase this to hundred grand. 20 grand, okay, great. You know, it. Uh, I mean, it would have been great back in the year when I was buying uh, perpetual licenses of software, not having to depreciate it. But 20 grand, I can't even get a new scanner. You can't even buy a new car. If it was 100 grand, I could go and buy a new point cloud scanner for my business and write it off instantly, not have to depreciate it. And that would you know, be good, save you some tax. Stoughton said the reality was businesses needed to have money to purchase assets in the first place to benefit from the tax break. Yeah, well, yeah, you've got to be making money to spend money. This is the thing. You know, writing stuff off is useless. It, it's a false economy, guys. If you're spending money to save money, you don't want to get into that trap. Only buy an investment or invest in some capital, if you infrastructure, if you need it, if it was always planned to happen. Meanwhile, he noted that the energy rebate will only support roughly 38% of the country. It's 300 bucks, guys. It's, it's nothing, okay? All these energy rebates. And, I mean, I don't mean to sound like a dick, but $300 is bullshit. Come on. Okay, what, what's that? That's, I saw an advertisement on Steam for the, uh, the... Actually, if you're into gaming, Green Man Gaming is a whole lot of sales. And as I mentioned in my community tab, I've been playing a lot of Wolf 3D at the moment. The original... But, you know, when I open up Steam, it popped up Diablo for $110 or something for the base game edition. Okay, so this is three games now. Three computer games is the energy rebate. Whoop whoop de doo I, I used to do Uber and you'd get an airport run. You know, you could, in the morning before work, you know, 
It's three days of that. 300 buck airport runs. This is not, not much. Okay, Labor are lying to you about being better at managing the economy fundamentally because of their energy policies. They're going to be pushing more and more of this renewable stuff, which has been proven to be more expensive. It, okay, so don't believe any of what the politicians say that your cost of living is going to go down. That It's beyond their control. They don't have the ability to do that because of their ideological positions on fundamental things as power generation. They, would, they want you to pay more. They want to make power more expensive so you lose, use less so it's better for the environment. That, that's what's going to happen. And that flows through to everything we do. The Council of Small Business Organizations Australia called the budget a lost opportunity as uh, fa falling sales, revenue and rising costs put a major strain on the profitability of small businesses. It had been calling for uh, for eligibility for the instant asset write-off scheme to be broadened to businesses with a turnover up to 50 million, up from the current 10 million. 10 million. Yeah, no, that should be. I mean, yeah. Well, guys, let's have a bit of a chat about this one, eh? Um, what, what can I say? We all knew this was coming. This is the harsh reality of, of how the economy is going at the moment. I, it, it's it's really odd. You've got a, a definitely a two-speed economy here. People I talk to are completely flat out, depending on what sector you're working in, where you're getting work from. So that's that's going to be the reality of it. This is why you need to always have a backup plan, have a diverse, diverse range of income sources to ensure that you can survive economic difficult times. But for a lot of these small business owners, it, it's probably was the writing was on the wall years ago, sadly. Kind of sucks. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. And I will see you at the next episode of Heiser Says. Bye for now.